Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today we'll give some information on statistical tests in clinical trials. More after the intro. In this sixth part of our video series about biometry, we will talk about statistical tests as base of sample size calculation in clinical trials. The statistical test to be used in a study is always selected depending on the type of endpoint. This endpoint could be, for example, a differentiation between cured and not cured, or a lowering of the blood pressure. For the evaluation, different statistical tests are necessary. The required sample size is subsequently determined after design, test, and accuracy requirements have been defined. Here you can see two examples of types of endpoints in a clinical study. On the one hand, there are measured values, for instance, for blood pressure and cholesterol. Typical test methods for such measured values are t-tests, variance analyses, or regressions. On the other hand, in case of period of time measurements, such as survival rate or duration of time until cure or recurrence, survival analysis, Kaplan-Meier curves, log rank tests, or Cox regression have to be performed. Here you can see two further examples of types of endpoints. First, there is success slash failure, such as cured slash not cured, survived and not survived, etc. This kind of differentiation is evaluated by means of cross-tab tables, chi-square tests, or logistic regression. If the ranking of parameters is demanded, such as for the expression of a characteristic or for the Karnofsky index in oncology, then U-tests or Wilcoxon rank tests will be applied. An example, within a study, the blood pressure of a therapy group and a control group is compared. The parameter to be measured thus requires a comparison of mean values using t-test, variance analysis, regression, etc. Furthermore, it is assumed that the blood pressure to be measured is lower in the therapy group. So the ultimate question is whether the new antihypertensive therapy being investigated in this study is effective or not. Endpoint of the study is the success of the therapy meaning a lowering of the systolic blood pressure by a clinically interesting effect size of 20 units by the end of the study. A two-armed, randomized, double-blind study is selected with a certain number of subjects each treated with placebo or test therapy. For all subjects, the duration of therapy is identical, as is the inclusion criterion, which in this case is an increased systolic blood pressure of between 145 and 165 mercury millimeters. Listed here are the blood pressure values of the subjects in the therapy group and the control group in the course of the study. The mean values of both groups are identical at baseline, but as time passes, the blood pressure values in the therapy group continually decrease, as shown here schematically. Now, the focus of interest is on the extent of difference between the blood pressure values, which at beginning of the study were identical in their average. Now, the aim of the study has to be expressed in a formal way. First, the null hypothesis is defined, starting from the assumption that the therapy is not effective. If the null hypothesis was correct, the mean value of the therapy group would be identical to the mean value of the control group after the treatment. Opposed to this is the alternative hypothesis based on the assumption that the therapy is effective. These two hypotheses are defined before beginning of the study as an effective therapy would imply a lowering of blood pressure. The direction of the alternative for the one-sided statistical tests is also clearly defined. Keep this in mind and watch the upcoming part about sample size calculation and statistical tests. So much for today on statistical tests in clinical trials. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time.